Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, we're going to have a look at a simple way to share files using SMB1, which is a protocol compatible with MS-DOS LAN Manager, using a Raspberry Pi. So this is going to be a short procedure. I'm going to show you how to do this in 10 minutes or less. So I have a timeline to keep. I'll quit talking. Let's get right to it. So let's go ahead and talk about preconditions. But first, as always, this procedure is available in my Git repository. All right. So for the preconditions, one of the things you need to do is set up a Raspberry Pi and enable SSH. And I'm actually going to take you through my process on how to do that today. It's been in my Git repo for a while, but we're actually going to go through it. And also for purposes of this procedure, we're going to name the Pi file Pi. So let's have a look. All right. So the first thing we need to do is download the very excellent Raspberry Pi imager. And I'm just gonna go to Google and search for a Raspberry Pi imager. These things move around, so it's just easy enough to do that. You will find it pretty quickly, and you can scroll down and download the version for your operating system. Of course, my procedures are Windows-based, and that downloads pretty quickly, as you can see. From there, we get to click on it and go ahead and install it. It's an install and a next, 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 your typical installation. And then from there, it's set to run, so we can go ahead and run it and we'll see it launch here momentarily. There it is. Okay, so at this point I put my SD card into the drive and it has existing partitions, so Windows is naturally having a fit. But what we're going to do is actually erase this card. So I'm gonna to go to Choose OS and then go to Erase. And I recently discovered this feature and it's pretty cool. From there you can choose your storage device and then from there you can click on Write. And then Yes and it'll go ahead and erase it. Make sure you choose the right card, okay? <laughs> That's standard guidance that always applies. And once again, Windows is gonna freak out, so we'll just hit cancel as many times as needed. Great. At this point, we can go ahead and click continue, and the next thing we need to do is actually install Raspberry Pi OS onto the card. So to do that, we can go back to that operating system list and choose Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, choose our storage device, and click the right button and then yes. Sometime later it will finish. I have sped this up for your viewing convenience. So it goes ahead and writes and verifies and Windows freaks out yet again. So we can click cancel there and then continue. We now have a card ready to go. Excellent. So at this point, I'm going to put the card in the Raspberry Pi and start it and just go ahead and flash through those initial screens there rapidly to get to the desktop. At which point I'm going to hit next and choose my country and choose my language and my location, which my time zone is New York, so that's fine. I also wanna use the English language in a USB keyboard, so our US keyboard. So we'll click next there and it'll go ahead and set the location. That takes a while for some reason. At this point, you can go ahead and set your password and then next. And I have a black border around the edge of my screen. I don't care, I hit next. And from here, we're going to select a Wi-Fi network and put in the password for that and hit next. It will connect. And from there, it'll ask you to update the software. Also hit next. Sometime later, the system will be up to date and it's time to restart. After a restart, we're going to go to preferences, Raspberry Pi configuration, and we can set just a few things. First, we wanna wait for the network on boot. Not required, but I like to do that. Change the host name to FilePy. So we'll go ahead and type that in and then go to interfaces. And once I figure out where I'm going, choose SSH and enable. So with that, we've got SSH enabled. And since we changed the host name, it's time for another reboot. Perfect. So after that reboot, we can now SSH into the Raspberry Pi. So I've gone back over to the Windows desktop and I have launched a putty window, put in my username and my password that we just set. And we're now logged into the Raspberry Pi. So this beats having to do things using a keyboard and a graphical user interface because I like the command line. So we're going to go ahead and install some packages. The first thing we're going to do is perform an update to make sure that our system is up to date and it will be because, well, we just set it up so everything should be up to date. From there we can install live PCAP and WinBind and TCL and that will give us the ability to actually go ahead and enable WinS resolution. So just yes there when prompted. And when we're prompted for WinS, we're also going to choose yes. 
So there you go. And finally, I'm going to install the auto remover so that packages that aren't needed will get removed. This takes a little while to run, but it's nice and it'll find packages to get rid of. I think in this case, there was a Python package it got rid of. At this point, we can configure WinS resolution. So I'm going to edit the NS switch file and go down to the host line and add WinS to the end of it. Control X and then Y and then enter to save those changes. Perfect. And the last thing I'm going to do as a part of this prereq procedure is disable log rotate. I have found at the end of the month, usually my Raspberry Pi will go crazy and run out of memory. So I always disable this whenever I do an installation. So we'll comment everything out, do a control X and then enter, and then we'll go ahead and hit Y and out we go. Perfect. So that's the prereq. Now let's move on to configuring SMB1. And the first thing we need to do is install some packages, including Samba. And go ahead and say Y to install there. This will run for a little while. I have sped it up naturally. And from there, we're going to create a data directory and change the permissions on that data directory. And next, we're going to go ahead and edit the Etsy Samba SMB config file and find the global section. It's near the top. Put a couple of blank lines in there and copy over the two lines that you see on the right. And that will enable Samba 1, essentially, or SMB 1. Perfect. We're also going to add one share to the bottom of the file so that we have a data share that gets shared out to users of our network. So we can go ahead and paste that in as well. Excellent. So with this, we're actually all ready to test. To do some testing here, I'm going to launch a Windows 3.11 session and go ahead and map a network drive or connect a network drive. And I'm just going to choose drive D and set the path to filepy slash data, which is the share we just created. Click OK, and lo and behold, we get a drive D that's mapped. Excellent. From here, I'm just going to copy something over. I'll pick on this Harvard graphics directory. We can just copy that over to drive D, and sometime later, it will have copied over. Now, we can actually launch the SSH window and verify this data on the Pi. So there I am in the data directory, and there's an HG directory. And as we look in it, there's our files. Perfect. So next up, I'm going to launch a DOS prompt to show how to map drives in DOS. And the first thing we can do is a net use command to see the drive in DOS that's already mapped. We can delete it by doing a net use D colon slash D, and then map a new drive by doing a net use Z colon slash slash file pi slash data. And then if we do a DIR, we will see that data is in that directory. So perfect. This worked out just as we would expect. Okay, well, there's my procedure in 10 minutes or less. How to set up a Raspberry Pi with SMB1. Again, you may already have a way to do this that's more sophisticated. I don't have real fancy file sharing needs between my retro machines, so this works for me. One other thing I wanted to note is once upon a time, I had a problem trying to connect some Windows 3.11 PCs to the Raspberry Pi. And the reason was I had enabled both the wireless and the wired interface on the Pi. My suggestion is only pick one or the other. If you enable both, you're probably going to confuse these old devices. So just take heed of that. Definitely subscribe to the channel. There's more content on the way. Ring that notification bell and you'll be notified when new content is available. If you like what you saw, please do consider giving us a thumbs up. If not, consider sending me a strong message by pressing that thumbs down button twice. As always, it's been great having you along for the journey, and I can't wait to see you till next time. But until then, bye for now.